You know, someone asked me the other day, how do you decide if a deal is a better short sale than a sub two? And I said, well, that really depends on what your exit strategy is. If you want to live in the house, can you pay 250 for a house worth 200? If you love the house, if you can afford the payment, does it really matter if you're going to stay there? If it's going to be your home? No, it really doesn't. If it's worth that to you, and man, we've been in an example of that for two years now, people paying 50 and a hundred thousand dollars more than asking price. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in Florida, and I'm not sure about other states, lenders actually waived the appraisal on houses. Just get them solely. I yeah. mean, it's crazy, crazy stuff. If your intent is to rent a house out, let's say, let's use the same example. This house is worth 200. They owe 250. Let's say if the market tanks right now, and you, you see these scenarios, but the payment is 900 bucks a month and the house will rent for 18. If your intent is to hold it as a rental, can you still buy that house? Will it still make sense as a sub two? Why not? You're, you're going to make $900 a month in cash flow. And guess what? Eventually the house will be paid for and values will probably come back at some point in the future. So mm -hmm. can you make sense of an upside down property? Depends on your exit strategy. As far as how uh, to do a, a short sale instead of a sub two, how would you know when to do that? If you're like us and you're not interested in rentals and you're not buying 20 houses a year to live in, you, you just want to sell with seller financing. Now that model will not work with an upside down house. Yes, that would be a candidate for a short sale. Hey guys, thanks for watching. While you're here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out these other great videos and podcast episodes.